Hi, this is Gary Shoop again with How to Design a Continuous Flow Intersection, Part 2. Um, first, uh, step three, uh, determine if CFI should operate as part of an overall coordinated traffic signal system. Um, this is going to be important uh, because uh, if, if I used 90 seconds before, but uh, I need to coordinate with signals that, uh, not too far upstream and downstream uh, that have a longer cycle length, it's, it's going to impact my geometry for my CFI traffic signal. So uh, one needs to compare the cycle length selected from step two with the cycle length needed to be synchronized with an overall coordinated traffic signal system. Um, if it is to be coordinated, select the higher cycle lengths from step two and step three to be analyzed and considered. Um, from step two, uh, it was decided that a 90 second cycle length was adequate. Um, the overall coordinated system cycle for this example, uh, 75 seconds. So we're gonna go with the higher of the cycle lengths, 90 seconds. and. Uh, what I would do is go back and uh, adjust the nearby signals to uh, 90 seconds in order to provide coordinate operation along the arterial. Um, with step four, uh, once you know what the cycle length is, um, or what you're assuming it's going to be right now, um, you need to confirm that the timing split movements for the through movements of the CFI approaches are greater than the timing splits required for those corresponding left turn movements. Um, Back earlier when we were looking at the, the main CFI traffic signal you know, with highway capacity um, calculations, uh, we were assuming that the left turns were going to be able to operate concurrently with uh, the through movements. And uh, now, now we're just going about checking it. And this is the left turn movements for the advanced CFI traffic signals. Uh, for example, during the AM design hour, I'm showing that the eastbound through movement split is 30 seconds and the eastbound left turn movement split at 25 seconds. Um, and correspondingly, I'm showing the same calculations for the westbound movements there. Um, so what I can tell is that the through movement split is going to be uh, high enough to satisfy the left turn movement splits with the CFI um, approach lanes. A and this is critical. Um, this is a step that could easily be overlooked uh, by one assuming that uh, the through movements are always greater than the left turn movements. Uh, why that is usually the case, it's not always the case and it needs to be verified. Um, I'm not going to go into detail with the PM design error, but uh, hopefully I explain it clear enough that you understand. Uh, for this example, all the CFI approach through movement splits are greater than the corresponding left turn splits uh, on the CFI approaches. Uh, step five, with this maximum CFI approach left turn splits known, um, calculate the minimum spacing for advanced CFI traffic signals. Okay. Uh, there's going to be a direct link based on that left turn movement split for the advanced uh, CFI traffic signal movements. Um, for the AM and PM design hours for this example, uh, we were saying that a, a 25 second split is needed based on uh, the design hour for the AM. A and for the PM, I am going to use the same 25 seconds, okay? A and the reason being is uh, the AM design hour um, requires a higher left turn movement split. So that's going to set the geometry, uh, not the lower one. And I know this will be more understanding in a few seconds here. Um, once I know these splits uh, from step f the pre th this step, uh, which is 25 seconds of this example, uh, I can calculate the minimum spacing for the advanced CFI traffic signals. Um, the way that I looked at this, um, I looked at the CFI operation being very similar to a, a diamond interchange phasing. So uh, I went to the Passer 3 design manual, okay, created by TTI, and uh, I looked at how they calculated the interior travel time um, be between the diamond interchanges. But in this case, rather than solving for the travel time as they do for Passer 3, um, which we kind of know because we know what the, the, the split is that is needed. I'm going to solve for the distance and divide by two. So I'm kind of assuming that, and I think it's pretty accurate, that, that the distance, the time required for uh, a vehicle to go from the advanced left turn split to the center, uh, the main CFI is going to correspond to uh, the same distance for a vehicle traveling from the main CFI to the advanced traffic signal. Okay. Um, I'm also assuming that the desired speed between these CFI signals, the advance in the main, uh, is no more than 30 miles per hour. Uh, I personally don't
don't recommend going with spacing less than 300 feet between the CFI traffic signals. I, I think you're starting to get the signals a little bit too close together. Um, and, and I think 30 miles per hour is a realistic design speed uh, to use uh, based on uh, looking at traffic movements uh, in these short urban areas. Here, I, I, I'm just going through uh, the mathematical equations of how I uh, evolved to how to calculate x. Okay, so with the maximum CFI approach left turn splits known, the minimum spacing for the advanced CFI traffic signals is calculated. Um, this is math that we went through in high school, and I'm, I'm just solving for x. With this slide, um, I wanted to show through an animation uh, of how that splits calculated in that time. Um, here with the arrows, I'm looking at the first half of that time that's needed for that split for the le advanced left turn splits and then I'm looking at the second time with the vehicles going away from the main CFI and approaching the advanced CFI traffic signals. Um, a lot of publications that I've seen on CFIs, the ones I've shown, they're saying it's 325 feet and uh, I can't find any mathematical uh, reasoning behind that. I, I think it's pretty close to it, but and I think my uh, equation derivation from the Pastor 3 manual uh, kind of agrees with it, but it, I think it can vary a little bit from the 325 feet. Um, and the actual advanced spacing, I think it needs to be computed. Uh, I personally wasn't satisfied with just using a distance without understanding on how it was computed. Um, in addition to this uh, spacing, one also needs to compute the left turn queue storage needed at the advanced uh, CFI traffic signals. Um, I, I'd say just based on uh, previous traffic signal design techniques. Um, many state DOTs have standards on how to prepare uh, for left turn storage. You can use Synchro to calculate it. Um, in this publication to the left, they're showing 350 feet. I think it was just more of an example. It, it's going to vary dep depending on volume demand, cycle length. There's a those are the major variables that go into it. And um, I, I want to use previous traffic signal timing approaches to come up with the CFI traffic signal design. So, so rather than just using an approach based on uh, simulations and calculating a model, I wanted to approach from an analytical standpoint and quantitatively, which I'm showing here. Um, for step six, um, I'm going to review the right turn movements at the center CFI traffic signal. Um, items to evaluate include the following. Do the opposing right turns to the CFI left turns um, d require traffic signalization? A am I going to need to signalize them? Um, am I going to separate the traffic signal phasing, or is a geometric solution needed? Um, in, in that case, I'll, uh, several of the CFIs being designed, um, they are looking at it from a geometric design approach. Uh, other ones are signalizing the right turns at the center CFI. And uh, I'm going to show examples with animations on what I'm discussing. Uh, if you are going to signalize the right turn movements at the center of CFI, um, do the right turn movements at the center of CFI traffic signal have sufficient green time for capacity? Um, something that could be overlooked and something that needs to be evaluated. This concludes uh, part two on the how to design a CFI uh, intersection. Uh, see part three elsewhere on youtube.com.